Hi, I'm Mike, owner of the Ingroove in Phoenix, Arizona. Today I'm doing the new arrival video for August 27, 2021. So, a few new pre-releases I'll talk to you guys about this week. The first thing is, this was an, uh, announced at the end of last week. The Rolling Stones are doing a brand new remaster of Tattoo You. And it's coming in a bunch of different ways. So you've got a single CD, a double CD, a CD box set, a 1 LP, 2 LP, and then a 5 LP box set. It's on the website. It explains to you the difference, you know, on the web, our, on our site, www.theingroove.com, of all the different configurations. So check it out. So Charlie Watts unfortunately died this week, which was very sad. One of my favorite bands of all time. The very first concert I ever saw was the Rolling Stones on the No Security Tour. And I probably saw them about 15 times since. Uh, unbelievable band. I saw them on their second to last concert they ever performed with Charlie here in Glendale. And I got to say, somebody asked me afterwards, they're like, what'd you think of the show? And I'm like, well, it was, it was pretty bad. And they're like, well, what are you talking about? And I'm like, well, you know, it's just not what it was 15 years ago. You can kind of tell they're getting old and they're getting tired. And they're like, well, you know, I was planning on going on one of the future dates. Should, you know, I'm not going to go. And I'm like, no, 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 hold on a second. I'm like, you know, they're for the Rolling Stones. They were bad. Compared to every single band on the face of the earth, they're significantly better. But the Rolling Stones not giving a show compared to what they did 15 years ago, best concert I've ever seen. I mean, many, many of their shows rank as the absolute best show I've ever seen. The only person that I would ever even put remotely in that top echelon of the Rolling Stones of the some 15 odd times I saw them would have been Prince. They put on an absolute amazing show. And even the Rolling Stones, not at the absolute top of their game, is better than every single live act, new, old, it doesn't matter out there today. So very sad, but you know, he was 80 years old and it's kind of coming for all of us, but very sad. So Charlie Watts. Mobile Fidelity announced a new ELO Eldorado Super Vinyl. This originally was going to come out as a one-step. It was announced a couple of years ago. Didn't hear anything about it. All of a sudden, it was announced for December 2021 release of... Yeah, December 2021 is going to be a release in a Super Vinyl format. So I talked about this at great length in a previous video earlier this week. Super Vinyl, same as the one-step, but not the same process manufacturing-wise as the one-step. This is a traditional... Uh, metalwork process. So lacquer, mother, father, stamper, vinyl record as opposed to the one-step process. But quite nice. Been a pretty, uh, pretty popular title. Unlike some of the other stuff though that they've done, this is not, you know, limited to 3,000 and it's done. This is going to be a more traditional mobile fidelity release. Also, there's a new Blue Note Classic title coming out. Duke Pearson's Merry Old Soul. So it's due October 1st. It's an all analog cut by Kevin Gray Christmas album. And it's an unbelievably good Christmas album, guys. If you got a chance to hear it or haven't had a chance to hear it, go online and listen to it. I know a lot of people aren't into Christmas music, but this is one of those albums you could get away with playing year round. And, you know, he's doing essentially Christmas tunes, but he's doing them in, you know, different arrangements, a little funkier. So. A real good record, and I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, Blue Note Classic. All those titles available now on our website as pre-orders. With the Blue Note Classic stuff, the Tone Poet stuff, and the Verve Series stuff, I highly recommend you getting those pre-orders in as soon as possible because in the last three drops, they have not shipped us enough, or anybody for that matter. These things have essentially hit the market sold out. So... You know, it's not like the old days where you had time. You could either pre-order or you can come in and get it in, you know, the week after, the week of. That seems to be a problem here for the last three releases. But new for this week, from the Verve Universal Series, this is essentially their non-Blue Note Tone Poet stuff, done in the same stout and tip-on jacket from the original Analog Master Tape. Bill Evans Trio 64. This was pushed back once. Trio 65, which was announced to come out with this, has been pushed back till next year. But I do have Trio 64. I want to keep in mind, guys, if you ordered these as a pair, our shipping policy is if you have $50 or more, you get free shipping. 
if you ordered both of these and I only have one, you have to wait, unfortunately, the other one comes in or you need to order something else. Uh, you know, if you guys have to have it right away, you can call into the store and we can work you through another way of getting this to you. But yeah, having had a chance to listen to it, I literally just got this a couple of hours ago. It's been an absolute, extremely hectic restock week. I've got Sam's Records, tons of new arrivals, Speaker's Corner, and then like right towards the middle of today, Trio 64 dropped. But yeah, super looking forward to this. There's really, there is, I'm trying to think, there is no Bill Evans audiophile records in print. I guess theoretically, Undercurrent is being done by Pure Pleasure and Mobile Fidelity, but neither one of them I think are available. And I've never been a fan of the pressing really of either of those records, but Trio 64, I'm guessing that's going to be phenomenal. Back in stock from Sam Records, Miles Davis. This is the 1958 soundtrack he did with Barney Weiland, Elevator to the Gallows. Fantastic, all analog, done out of France. Sam's Records is a boutique label. They got about 15 at the most titles in their catalog, but they replicate the original, all flip back covers like it originally came out. You can see how high quality the cover is. They went back, they licensed the original photography. Everything in Sam's catalog is a must own. If you are a jazz fan, you should own every single title in the Sam record catalog. John Lewis, this is a fantastic title, Afternoon in Paris, same kind of concept, high quality photography, flip back covers. Billy Harper Quintet. And we got Chet Baker. Now, people don't realize these are studio albums, but these were studio albums cut in France. These are not easily obtainable here in the United States. Chances are you are not going to go into your local record store and find one of these things sitting on the shelves. But that's what kind of makes these titles cool is they're putting mainstream jazz artist titles, studio albums, not just some random FM broadcast title, but studio albums back into print. All right, so here is a label. This is a kind of a more up and coming audiophile label. I gotta do a little more research into this. This is the Lost Recordings. Some of these titles, it looks like Resonance has done as, maybe not these, but maybe the Saravon or maybe some of their other titles. I just briefly looked at this label. I just got this in the other day, but it looks like some of this stuff has been issued by some other folks. But from the blurb, these are all analog cut. And I don't think some of those other variations of these other pressings of these by other labels are cut from the original analog tape. I think they're digitized, but don't hold me to that. I'm going to do a little more research on it. I'll get back to you guys. But these are limited to 2000. This is a recital from 1976. Really, really high quality. All like it's like a linen back cover numbered on the front and the back in like a nice white marker. Same thing with the Sarah Vaughn. This is live in 1969. Very, very nice. Don't have many of those, so they will not last long. Finally got a restock of the Horace Silver song from my father. So, so far, and a lot of people are asking me, because some of these titles, they never even sent the full allotment. So some of you guys are still waiting for the first batch from not only me, from other retailers, but Horace Silver, Song From My Father. This is the second, this was originally the second batch of titles. So they're getting stuff repressed. So I'm thinking Monin and some of these other ones are gonna be coming in real soon. Lord Solar Power. This is the black vinyl version. New EP from Death Cab for Cutie. All right, Sun Ra. Singles. This is volume one of two. This is a three LP set. Official release in conjunction with Sun Ra, remastered, poster, artwork, photos. Pretty good sized book in there. It actually looks like this would be an interesting little uh, package. D. Schneider, Leave a Scar.
Big Red Machine. How long do you think it's gonna last? Soundtrack for The Dark Knight. This is on neon green and violet splatter vinyl. That's gonna look pretty cool. I'll have to check it out when I get home. I know uh, my wife Angel snuck one of those. Everclear, the very best of, and this is on limited edition splatter vinyl. You can see from that off-placed hype sticker there. Big country without the aid of a safety net. This is a triple disc, 180 gram concert from 1993. This looked quite interesting. I'm going to have to give this a ch give this a listen to later on this week. This is Chet Baker in Tokyo. This is a Japanese pressing. Chet Baker 4. And from the blurb, this is, let's see, King Record. King Record was kind of an iconic jazz reissue label from the 70s. They did a lot of Blue Note stuff. I'm not sure if this is the same King Record, but quite possibly. And they did Memories, Chet Baker in Tokyo. This is, uh, let's see. I'm going to give both of these a listen to. They're really high quality. They look, you know, they look really nice. Well done. Okay, guys, I'm going to tell you what you want. What you really, really want. I don't know, maybe you don't. But Spice Girls, Wannabe, 25th Anniversary Edition Picture Disc. When I was... Uh, 14, when this came out, I bought the single. I'm not going to lie. Don't tell nobody. It'll be our secret. You, me, and YouTube. Coming to America. Rhymes of Zumunda. I was very disappointed in this movie. The original was an iconic movie. I didn't think this one was very good. But the soundtrack might be quite good. John Mellencamp, The Good Samaritan Tour, eh, 2000. Looks like he's doing, what's he doing on here? All Along the Watchtower, Street Fighting Man. All right. Amaro Furtates? Senecofa. Butchered that up all kinds of ways, guys. Don't text me about it. I don't care. All right, The Killers, Pressure Machine. Okay, back in stock from Speaker's Corner. It has been a while. This thing is absolutely awesome. I talk about it all the time. I play it in the store all the time. It sounds fantastic. It's a fantastic record. The bass on this thing is something I've never really heard on a 33. It's more reminiscent of a 45. It's on the top 10 imprint analog record list that I did that you should own. Absolutely fantastic. Lou Reed's Transformer. I love this album. Before a rock, a mainstream rock record. It is one of the absolute best sounding records I've ever heard. Patti Smith Horses, Speaker's Corner, another fantastic album. Alan Parsons, Eye in the Sky. Keep in mind, Speaker's Corner, audiophile label out of Germany, been around since the 90s. Everything they do is cut from analog components. John Lee Hooker Sings the Blues. This is actually the new arrival for this particular batch. Charles Mingus. A couple Mingus titles in here. Got the clown as well. I actually really dig the clown. There's a little bit of spoken word in there that I'm not nuts about, but the rest of the record's quite good. Ornette Coleman's The Shape of Jazz to Come, one of those iconic records from the 50s that forever changed jazz. This is a fantastically fun record. Charles Lloyd at Monterey, Forest Flower, killer, killer record. I don't, can't recommend this highly enough. This is another Mingus title. This is a double disc. Live, 1960 at the Antivas Jazz Festival. One of the few remaining in print Miles Davis audiophile records, Round About Midnight. Haven't had this one in a long time. It's Monk's Time, Thelonious Monk.
Antonio Jobim. Stoneflower, killer record. Nina Simone, Nina Sings the Blues. This is the Three Diz Jano Starker box set. Speakers Corner did this as well. Analog Productions did it. Speakers Corner did it maybe some 10, 15 years ago. This is a fantastic sounding record. I want to say this is actually cut by Kevin Gray too. I need to double check that, but Albert King, Born Under a Bad Sign. I'm pretty sure he did this. The Doobie Brothers, The Captain and Me. We got Can Delay, Ninth Can Delay, what is this, uh, 1968. So, Annette, this is a soundtrack. Looks like it was done by Sparks. Cold Heart. Every day is a day. Ah, oh, yes, guys. Every day is a day. Words of a poet. 100 Homo DJs. Super Knot. This is on purple vinyl. With confidence. Mari Diaz. What do we got here? Momaki Boys. Def Haven Infinite Granite. Actually, I got some analog productions restocks in here too. How do you pronounce this? Churviches? I don't know. I've never probably pronounced that right. Capstan, Separate. So here's actually a title that I showed you guys a week ago, but then I put it in my system wrong. I put it in under Volume 1, but this is Brian Jackson, Jazz is Dead, Volume 8. I showed it to you guys in a video last week, and we received it incorrectly in our system as Volume 1. Okay, with the restocks from Analog Productions, this is the 33 RPM version of Leonard Skinner's Second Helping. And this is an iconic blues album, Junior Wells, Hoodoo Man Blues, fantastic record. This is the 45 RPM cut, killer record. But yeah, tons and tons and tons of killer stuff this week. It's nice to get these big chunks of titles that people are after. But yeah, that's it, guys. Check us out on the website, www.theingroove.com. Until next time.